So we're going to try and make a grid method biro portrait today. Something a bit like this, maybe. All right, so here we go. Here I am gridding up my paper, which is the first thing you're going to do. So I've given you a template on how to do this on the slideshow. Um, with an A3 piece of paper, that's the size of your sketchbook, you're going to make a rectangle which is 40 centimetres long and 25 centimetres across. And when you divide that up into five centimetre chunks, you're going to get five blocks, five squares across and eight squares down. OK, so here I am marking out every five centimetres down my 40 centimetres down. I'm doing it on both sides there, so it's going to be a straight line across. And I'm using a pencil so I can rub it out later, so not too dark. There we go, 40 down. And here we go. This is the picture that I've chosen to copy. And then so I put it into Photoshop and I put a grid on, which is the same as on my paper. So I've made that easy for you guys by putting a grid of five by eight perfect squares over the top of that photograph. And now I'm gonna try and transfer what I see from the photograph onto my grid that I've drawn out. So the first thing is just pick somewhere interesting to start. And you're gonna use those grid lines to be able to decide what goes in each little square. That's the beauty of this method. It's a way of working out just bit by bit where everything goes in the drawing. So you don't have to worry about the whole thing. You don't have to get scared about all the complicated bits in it because you're just going to try and draw the shapes that are in each square. It's a bit like thinking about those negative spaces that we looked at earlier. So within the square, what sort of shape is happening in there? Do the lines meet, meet the grid lines there? The really, really fun bits to look at is where the, the squares join at that sort of T-junction, the cross in the middle. What's happening um, where that cross is a really good place to sort of try and decide what's going on in that square. I've speeded up this video, which is why it looks like I'm drawing really quickly and confidently. But really, you know, I was thinking quite hard and it took me quite a long time, so it, it will take you a while. So, but I'm sketching out what's in what place. I'm also just going to quickly apologise for my terrible lockdown hair that keep, kept coming into camera view at this point in time. I didn't realise it was happening, obviously, and that's why the focus keeps going in and out, and I apologise for that. Um, OK, so you're going to draw in biro or fine liner, so pen, you, no pencil, so no need to do any rubbing out. Just draw the lines that you see. If you think you've made a mistake, just draw the line that you think is right, okay? Don't worry about drawing lines that you think maybe are wrong because the whole thing is gonna look quite scribbly um, and you really won't notice it. Don't worry about it, okay? Don't think you've done it wrong or think you have to start again, anything like that, just go for it. Um, the very If something really bad does happen later on that you think you've made a mistake, you could always put a bit of white paint over the bit that you don't like or a little bit of collage and just carry on. But I think it'd be absolutely fine just uh, getting on with it and then we're going to use this method of cross hatching you see I've started here which is very scribbly yeah and it doesn't mean have to be absolutely precise at all um, to colour in all the shadows here um, so one thing about cross hatching so cross hatching basically means hatching crossed over hatchings is just lines and then when you cross them over one way against another you're going to build up dark so there you go going the other direction and going in a bit more and really sort of going over it lots of different directions. Now one thing that some people get a bit wrong with um, cross hatching is they think it's it's it really is quite almost like straight lines going one way parallel to each other, straight lights go, straight lines going the other way parallel to each other and it ends up looking a bit rigid and a bit gritty um, and doesn't have the sort of kind of life in it that you need. With this sort of cross hatching it really is just you can send lines going any which way and look, I'm doing some little kind of little random lines around there. Look at the way some of my lines are curved. They don't have to be dead straight. A really nice thing to think about is how to send your lines in the direction the face seems to be going, the bit of face that you're drawing. If it's got a sort of curve, can you do sort of curvy lines that feel like they're going in that sort of direction? Um, we'll see if we can see some of those in a bit, but 
yeah, just really vary your lines. So thick lines, thin lines, um, quick lines, um, curvy lines, little dashes and dots even. Yeah. So try not to make it too um, stiff and rigid um, with your lines. Yeah, just be quite loose. It really will look good just, um, just going for it and kind of scribbling around everything. But the thing I really want you to take care of is look for those dark areas. If you squint your eyes, and I've changed all the pictures that you're going to choose from today um, into black and white so that you can really think about value, so difference in colour, uh, I mean shade and light. Value means kind of dark and light. Um, so squint, if you squint your eyes, the light really jumps out from the dark and you can really see which areas you need to be really, really, really dark and black. So in those bits, I want you to really go for it. And that means cross hatching over and over to get those really deep dark blacks and you're gonna get that really dramatic contrast, okay? So you can see here, I'm kind of working out which areas just basically need to be all filled in with lots and lots of dark. And I'm trying to do lots of those bits there. Another thing to say is that you, you don't have to sort of color right up to the edges. Some little bits of the drawing, you could maybe like sort of leave kind of loose um, and sort of not completely filled in. That can look really, really nice. But definitely spend a long time in the sort of the central bit and the main bits that you want to do. Quite a lot of these pictures have hands in as well, which is brilliant from last week. That's where I was at this point. Um, I've done most of the face there and there I've sort of added the hand and I think in a minute I was going to show you um, I've done a bit more of the clothes but you can see I haven't sort of coloured right towards the edges. Now at this stage I'm almost finished rub out the grid lines and I've got this little bit of coffee in a cup. You don't have to do this stage but it does look really cool so I would encourage you to give it a go. You can use uh, tea or just quite a bit of strong coffee in a cup works really really well. And what I'm doing is I'm just painting over the shadowy bit, leaving some white, not painting over everything, just painting over where I've done most of the shadows. It always dries a lot lighter than it seems, so I'm not really nervous about where it's going. I'm not trying to stay within the lines too much. I'm not trying to be too precise. It's been quite blobby. Um, because like I say, it will dry quite a lot lighter and it just it leaves a really, really nice effect. And what I actually did was I waited for a layer to dry, um, you know, about half an hour, and then I put on another layer, and I think I did that two or three times. Um, and it leaves these kind of really nice uh, watermarky um, blobs, which you'll see in a minute. So this is something I really love you to try if you feel brave enough, which I encourage you to. But you can remember you can take photographs of it at every st stage of the way, okay? Okay, and now... There we go, and that was the finished piece. Um, and you can see I decided to go in and colour in that little star on his hand too.